At Headlight Revolution, we are big fans of putting aftermarket lights on vehicles like this third gen Tacoma. In this video, I'm gonna install the all new Morimoto Rock Light Kit. We're using eight pods and we're gonna have them in RGB. So follow me, let's get started. Let's pop the hood. We're gonna install a fuse tap. Once you locate your fuse box on the driver's side of this Tacoma, you're gonna come to the kit and see two fuse tabs. You're only gonna need one. Get the fuse tab that replicates the fuses already in your box. What we're going to do is attach this fuse tab into the fuse box that's powered with an ignition wire. I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. We're gonna remove that ignition wire fuse tab. Then we're gonna place this fuse tab into the fuse box, connect this wire and keep on moving. Since this 10 amp fuse that you just took out is different than the fuse tap from Morimoto, you do need to go buy a 10 amp fuse from a local parts store. Thankfully, a 10 amp fuse is really common and I have one right here. Take this now and put in that 10 amp slot. Now grab the wire with the Morimoto switch out of the Morimoto kit. We're going to connect this end right here to the fuse wire that we just connected. Then we're going to install the negative battery terminal, which is right here. After that, we're going to run this and connect it to the Bluetooth controller. When this connection is made, we're gonna run it to the side of the fuse box and put the cover back over it. So your fuse tab is in. Now we got the fun part, which is passing this switch wire that's included in the kit through wherever you guys choose to put the switch through the firewall back by the fuse box area over here. We're gonna pass all of this wiring through. It's a little bit daunting, but trust me, I know you can do it. Follow me into the driver's side area. So now you have to make a decision. Where do you want this switch? If you have upfitter switches, it's a different story. Luckily, Morimoto includes this switch right here. It does light up when it gets power, which is a really cool feature that a lot of rock light kits don't have. Now, you need to decide where you want it. This Tacoma already has some space right here. So this is where I'm gonna drill a 11 16 hole with a step bit like this. Drilling that hole is gonna allow me to make it just big enough to put all of this wiring and this switch through. We're gonna unplug this switch. It's gonna look like this. There's a little locking collar on it. Remove this lock right here. Okay, we're gonna leave this rubber seal. Don't lose this rubber seal. Now, I already know that there is no wiring on the back side of this dummy plug right here. However, if you're gonna put the switch somewhere else, you really gotta be certain that there's nothing on the back side that you're going to drill through. The last thing you want is to cut wires with your step bit. Now grab a beer, take a chill pill, it's gonna be fine. Drill the hole in your Tacoma. Just to be sure, I'm gonna remove this plastic panel and just reconfirm that there's nothing behind this plastic piece. I don't want there to be a wire on the backside and then cut through it. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom of this panel holding it in. You can also use a Phillips screwdriver Remove those two, and then you can pull your plastics away. There's one more hidden bolt on this side here. I'm just gonna remove this piece of plastic by reaching on the side, pulling it away, and revealing that bolt. With this panel pulled back, you can definitely tell there's nothing that's gonna be cut, no wiring behind here. So I'm just gonna start drilling the hole right here. I'm gonna actually push this back in so I have something to uh, pry up against. I'm gonna just drill the hole, and if I need to, I can even pop that piece out and get it from the backside to make sure that there's nothing obstructing that switch going through that panel. M logo facing upwards. Now I'm just gonna lock this on the backside. You may have to modify the backside depending on where you put this switch. The scariest part is already done. Now plug this into the back side. This is where the switch would get connected. And then you are gonna have to pass this stuff through the firewall. Thankfully, Toyota leaves this little nipple on the back side in the engine bay that you can just cut, you can notch it off, and then attach these wires like this to a wire fish. So I'm gonna tape this to a wire fish. This will help me pass it through the firewall. So I'm gonna go biggest end. I'm gonna do the smallest end first, kind of like that. So I'm gonna tape it up just like this to the wire fish. I'm gonna then try to work it through the backside after cutting off the nipple on the rubber grommet on the front side of that firewall. We're gonna pass it through, work our way to the front of the engine bay, pull it through, and then we can connect all of these wires. So I'm gonna connect this to that switch. We've already passed it through the firewall now. Once we do that, we're gonna push all of these plastics back together on the cab side, and then meet me over to the front of the vehicle. This only lines up one way, so be cautious. 
Full disclosure, passing this through the firewall was a mess. It wasn't the most fun. However, we've done it and now we can connect this wire. This wire is gonna connect to that fuse tab wire that we put in the fuse box earlier on. So we're gonna connect this and we're gonna close the fuse box cover over top of the wiring. Then we're going to connect this, which is gonna to connect to the Bluetooth controller. We're gonna mount the Bluetooth controller and then keep moving from there. With the fuse box cover replaced, grab your Bluetooth controller that looks like this. This end right here is gonna get connected to one of the two remaining connectors right here that you pass through the firewall. All you got is this one and the negative battery terminal connection. I'm gonna install the negative battery terminal connection at the very end. I don't like working with all of these wires when they are hot. So I'm gonna do this at the very end and test it from there. Push the barrel connector together and then push this through here and tighten it down. Now this is a universal kit from Morimoto. So there's two holes on the Bluetooth controller. You really could probably get by with just using one screw and screwing it somewhere around the battery around here. I'm gonna do it about here, but you can put this wherever you would like. You don't wanna bury it too far down in the engine bay because you do have to get your phone kind of close to it in order for it to connect properly. So I'm just gonna use a random screw that I found down here. That's no lie, I actually found this down here. I'm gonna pass it through like this and I'm just gonna tighten it down. like that. So I'm gonna install eight of these rock lights on this Tacoma and I'm gonna use the magnet mounts. Now there's a lot of companies out there that have a lot of different methods on mounting rock lights and I think the most ingenious way would be a magnet mount. If you don't have an aluminum body like some of the Fords, the magnet mounts come in real handy when you're mounting these inside here. So I'm gonna show you how to do the magnet mount on the back side of these. The rest of the kit just has a bunch of extension wires that gets connected to that Bluetooth controller that we just installed. So we're gonna extend it to the sides here. Then we're gonna run the longer wires to the back. We're gonna actually route the wiring from this wheel and the way back to the passenger back rear tire. So. That is gonna be in just a second. Let me show you how to do this magnet mount really quick. All of the hardware is included, but there is a little Allen key right there. We're gonna go remove that bolt. Remove this screw here. And we're gonna reinstall a longer screw here. It's in the kit. Leave the washer that's on the inside of this. We'll install the longer screw and then screw on the magnet on the back side. As you screw this magnet on, you can still tell that it's actually pretty shallow. This is gonna be really easy to hide once you mount it to your vehicle. So make your way back to the Bluetooth controller right here in the front of the engine bay. We're gonna add some extensions now. Just to give you guys a little look at this Bluetooth controller, these two right here are actually universal JST connections. You can add interior illumination to these or anything else that you would like. Anything that you wanna be controlled with the RGB remote, you can with these little connections. We're not gonna use them for this rock light kit because they have the waterproof barrel connectors, which is a way better connection than those JSTs. So what we're first gonna do is add a splitter and this splitter, because we're running eight, will have four different connections on it. It'll look something like this. Line up the keyway and screw it down. Now on the front of the vehicle, all four rock lights are gonna be connected to this one splitter. While we're over here, we might as well add the other extension for the back. We're gonna use one six foot connector, line up the keyway and screw it down. This six foot extension wire is gonna get connected to another six foot extension wire. That way you can run all eight rock lights from the back. So we're gonna put two of them inside here. And like I said, you got those magnet mounts on the back side of these rock lights, which are super clever. Look at this. That could be driven around and it's not going to fall off. These magnets can actually hold over 40 times the weight of the rock light itself. There are two ears on each side here and here. If you wanna get a nice long self-tapping screw, just be careful. Last thing you wanna do is screw into some brake lines or wiring that's coming up through the fender well here. And I'm gonna put them on here because this undercoating spray is kind of missed right here, which allows me to put this rock light right here to bare metal and it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna route this wiring into the engine bay, go to the other side, connect it to that four wire splitter that we just installed on the Bluetooth controller. So we got one here, I'll zip tie it all up later. Let's just try one right here. I know that's a little weird staggered, but we can always move them later. Let's install the other two rock lights on the other side and we'll keep rolling. With those two wires ran into the engine bay, 
you can reach down and grab them. They're gonna come out right underneath the battery. And I'm just gonna kind of route these up alongside of the battery. And that's because I don't want them along any of these pulleys. I don't want the wiring to get caught in anything that moves. So just work your way, be cautious of where you're running this wire and you can zip tie it up all at the end. Now you can connect these two wires to this splitter. Line up the keyway, push it in, screw this down and do the same thing for the other one. So make your way back to that Bluetooth controller that you added this six foot extension. Like I said, if you haven't already added the second six foot extension, do that now. The best thing about this, in my opinion, this whole entire kit, is that you don't need to cut and splice wires. I hated doing the soldering under the vehicle, especially because that's where all of that dirt, grime, and debris is, and the last thing I want is that wiring to fail. Even with some heat shrink, it's not as good as this waterproof connection. Now you should have enough length to make your way all the way back to the back of the vehicle. What I'm gonna do is route this alongside the battery, alongside the fender. So here's the wiring that I just ran down, and then I'm gonna route it behind this shield over here. It's just a rubber shield. If you need to take a pry tool, you sure can. Just be very mindful of these control arms. Last thing you want is for it to be around something that's moving. And there you are. We've already got enough length to make it all the way back to these fender wells here. Now what I'm gonna do is add that four splitter, that four way splitter onto this. That way we can connect all four of the pod lights back here. Now we're in the back, let's put the two rock lights on. Now I wanna say, I am a huge fan of this magnet mount. This magnet mount is intense. However, for up here, I am gonna show you guys how to use the self-tapping screws that come with the kit. So, I'm gonna actually take this magnet off and then I'm gonna put the screws on the sides and screw it in up here, one on each side of this wheel well. Don't forget to put your small screw back in with the washer so it holds the lens on properly. And then we're gonna connect the other pod lights with the longer wires on the passenger side. Let's connect these two rock lights to the splitter. And then I'm gonna push the splitter in a little bit so you definitely cannot see any of that wiring from out here. Installing the rock lights on the passenger side in the front is essentially the same. You're gonna be routing the wiring up. Instead of the battery, you're gonna have an air box. So once the wiring comes up through here, I'm gonna actually run it to the front of the vehicle, I think, and I'm gonna connect it to that splitter. So here's your splitter. You got two more barrel connectors. I'm essentially gonna try to hide all of this underneath this plastic piece. So I'm gonna take all seven of these push tabs out and run it underneath. All right, so let's pull this plastic cover off, set it aside, and let's connect those two rock lights on the front passenger side, the two barrel connectors, line up the keyways, tighten down the screw. Now I can put all my seven push tabs back in. So do the exact same thing for the other remaining two rock lights on the back passenger side. It's essentially the exact same. And then the wiring is gonna meet in the splitter. You can mount that splitter by your spare tire anywhere that you see fit. I wanna make sure all the rock lights work properly. We have to get to that negative wire. There's only one wire left to connect and it's the negative battery terminal right here. So let's tighten that screw down on the wire and we're ready to test it out. So download the Morimoto app. It works for your Android or your iPhones, anything with the latest version, it's great. Once you connect your phone to the Bluetooth controller, you can control it to a whole bunch of different colors. You can do essentially any color that you can pick. This is a real cool product, and to be honest, the install was not that bad. Wiring is not always fun, especially when you're running it all the way to the back of the vehicle. But trust me, I know you guys can do it. You can follow these tips and tricks, and you can do it to any other vehicle that you might have. So go to headlightrevolution.com, type in your year, make, and model, and you'll see everything else that we've tested for your vehicle.